Lovely to meet you. I'm so super excited to hear all about your businesses. First, I want to tell you a little bit about um, about me. So I um, set up my first business straight out of university um, called Rightster, which is an online video distribution company. So I've always been in business to business um, uh, organizations where I had rights holders like Fashion Weeks or sports clubs who wanted to get their content to the Daily Mail and the New York Times. And so we built a technology that would um, both put the video there, make sure it had the right advert, and um, we monetized that. And I built that business up to 250 people. I took it public in 2011, and I had 12 um, offices in 11 countries. And Last year, I acquired four other businesses. One of those businesses, you're gonna love this part of the story. Everyone's like, yeah, she was doing so well, she's doing so well. One of those businesses was a full management team of eight men. And I sat at a board table in May last year and I left the company because they decided that they were gonna take the business in a different direction and they convinced the board. And as a public company, me and my co-founder left. So, I've definitely had my ups and um, quite a hideous down, to be fair. And so, I spend time with founders, I, men and women, but I much prefer working with women. Um, and I try and help them with what their ideas are. I now have a new business, which is actually in data science. I'm not going to bore you with that, but if anyone's interested in artificial intelligence, I'm your girl today. Um, but when people are asking me about their business, they... Um, they all, I, I get very specific questions, like Sharma was talking about, these arguments she hears. Like, how should I price? Or um, what, um, what actual business model? Should it be a subscription business model? Or should it be pay as you, you, know, pay as you go? All of these questions, and I, there's so much noise. And I don't know the answer. Like, I really don't. And, and no one knows the answer. The only people who know the answer is your customers and these personas. So um, I want to talk about what is a persona, because... They are the key to ending these arguments that Sharma discussed. They're the key to making every decision in your business. Who are your customers? So what is a persona? It's the voice of the customer. It's generally an imaginary person, but as um, Sharma was saying earlier, she found real people on Instagram who embodied this. So real world information and real world data on them, but imaginary person that you have you have um, created, and it's a tool for understanding what their wants are and their needs. And then at that vehicle for you to explain to your actual audience of people who are gonna buy what you're selling. These are some examples that I like. Um, what I think is quite exciting is once you have your persona, making sure that you tell the story well. And as Sharma said this morning, it's telling your team internally. It's making sure that um, when you uh, onboard new people, they know and they have, and most companies put them up in, um, in you know, all over the office so that everyone knows who you're selling to. And we spoke earlier in a session, um, in my session about like what, how are you, how are you going to, um, who is, sorry, who is the person that you're, that you're selling to? And are they going to like what you want? And you can come and you can say to um, this guy here, doesn't have a name, Tim. You can ask Tim what he likes and where he, where he shops. And it, this it isn't about demographics. So, so I remember so well, um, three years ago, I, uh, I had a UX and design company come and talk to me and they asked who our demographics were. And... I was like, really? You want to know like 18 to 25? Or for me, it was 30 to 55-year-old men who bought um, uh, online video tech solutions. So I was selling to CIOs. And actually, what I learned really, really early on was it didn't matter that they were the CIO. It didn't matter that they, ha that they um, were white, male, and usually about 50. What mattered is that all of them wanted to get home earlier to see their kids. So my job was to build a piece of technology that could get them home earlier rather than a piece of technology that would suit a 50-year-old white man. That, didn't, that wasn't like the point. And I think um, that's what your job today is, is to get yourself into a situation where, I'm gonna show you these boards, where you can get to those beautiful visuals when you get back to your offices, get back to your bedrooms, and you, want, and you can take it to the next level. But for today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna build them up from a more technical standpoint with just the information that you need. 
And in your classrooms, you'll all get a sheet with boxes like this with just enough space to write a few words. So in your notepads, you can write more. And you'll talk a little bit about facts because you're going to want to give someone a name. And if, you, if, you, if it's relevant, give them an age bracket. If it's relevant, give them a gender. In many cases, it's not actually relevant. Um, and what do they actually care about? This is, the, this is my favorite box. I'm going to say that about all the boxes, so excuse me. This is a great box. Um, what do they care about? So for me, as I said, it was the guy who wanted to get home uh, and see his kids earlier. Is it their friends? Is it their family? Is it being on time? Is it health? Do they care about being known by other people? Do they care about sustainability? What are the things that gets them out of bed every day? Then their vibe and their style. I think um, this is... I've never seen so many awesome business proposals as I saw seeing your applications. Everyone has got a great vibe and a great style, and it's so important to make sure that that's um, front and center of the actual audience. And we spoke earlier in the workshop about, is it your style? Is it the business's style? Is it? And for me personally, I think it's got to be about those five girls or those five guys. Their persona, that is your, you know, that is your style. And are they old school? Are they trendy? Are they traditional? However you want to describe it, those are, those are the, um, uh, the, the things that you will then embody. What are their pain points? So are they overworked, worried about exams, worried about getting a job? All of those um, niggly things, you might not even be solving them. So you might be um, solving for other problems that they have. So someone might have... Um, uh, they might have a... Uh, I can only think of business, my business ideas, and they're so completely different to all of your guys. Um, someone might have a problem, which is they, they can't um, stay at work for long enough because they need to go and pick up their kids from school. Now, that's, their, that's the pain point that you've gone, and you're going to try and solve with the, uh, having a crash at Huckle Tree. But what are the other pain points? They're tired. They don't speak, they don't speak to other mums anymore. All of those other pain points are going to help you build what, in addition, is your actual, your actual brand. So um, thinking and asking them what are your pain points will unlock what you should actually be offering them. Their life goals, so this is um, another really exciting one because it will help your product development. Where do your um, five personas uh, want to get to and how can you help them get there? So they want to be on the front page of Vogue magazine or do they want to be on the front page of Wired? Do they want to never be seen um, and they are researchers in a university? What, what are their, their life goals? Is it a you know, Nobel Prize? Um, is it just to generally be a little bit happier? Um, the, the life goals, I think you'll find yourself um, getting quite attached to where they want to get to um, and that's how you can drive your business. What are their influences. Um, who makes the decision to buy what they're going to buy? Are they, um, you know, young, young children might be, your, um, might be your user persona, but actually the decision to buy is their mother. Um, I work with a virtual assistant company and a lot of the time it's the um, CFO who tells the CEO, mate, it's time, you know, to get a virtual assistant. And so the buyer is actually um, somebody else than your persona. S who makes the recommendation to them might be people on social media. You might buy those awesome pitta chips because you saw them in an Instagram post from um, Future Girl Core. So is it your peers? Is it people from school? Is it people from, um, from work? Who, who gets them to, to do something? Who affects their purchasing? Who's affected by them purchasing it? So your... Um, persona might buy um, a sex toy and who's benefits from that? The, the, your partner. So you want to think about who are all the different people who are going to um, actually either benefit or, or in some cases potentially not benefit from them buying your product. So we're going to spend a little bit of time doing that and what I'm hoping you then are able to do is go home and or to the office and spend your time developing and fleshing that out and as Sharma said find people and women like that online or men 
And then what you're able to do is unlock a few certain things. So the first is defining your product um, and additional services you might offer. So user personas are traditionally used in UX and design work so that you can come up with user stories. So I am... Um, I'm Tabitha, and I need a way to drop my kids off um, out of school in order to... And you can see how a user story would work. So this will be a really good space if you have or you haven't built your product yet to work with designers and developers to do so. So the next piece is about pricing and billing. So you can look back and you can say, I believe... So I have a hypothesis that someone will pay £10 a month for, for, for my um, uh, subscription to the Pitta Chips. You need to go and you need to ask those personas, would that girl actually pay £10 a month for a subscription of Pitta Chips? No one needs a subscription of Pitta Chips. The reason they probably, sorry, might do, the reason they probably like the Pitta Chips is because they like test, tasting new things. And so you probably need to price them on a per Pitta Chip bag basis. That was a really bad example. And... Lastly, you've then got how do you market, do PR, build your website, make referral plans. How do you do your sales activity to reach those people? It's quite a little bit more self-explanatory. But what you're able to do is test with them. And I know that, um, I'm not going to remember her name, but there's an awesome girl here who's coming after I've introduced these two, who are, um, is talking about how you can then reach those people on Facebook and Instagram. So your personas, your five personas, can extend into... Maybe a million people are Tims, and, uh, and, uh, and 20 million people are Sharmas, and there are a thousand um, Kates out there. And then you can go and reach them and convert them into being buyers of your product. Because I loved um, earlier, you're not in business until someone's buying what you have.